Hello, everybody. I didn't know if anybody would be on here tonight since it's Valentine's Day or if people would make plans for the weekend since it's a Wednesday. But anyways, I've been needing to do my boxy charm. I've been needing to talk about this thing I got from in Influencer. And I've been needing to um, do some Q&A because I've had some requests for that. So let me find myself on the computer and see if anybody's available to show up for this. I've been trying to get this done, trying to get on on live for quite a while now, but I just haven't been well. <laughs> been extremely tired in the aftermath of not being well, so I'm ready to roll tonight. So I see that there's some people here. Let me get to where I can see my chat. Does it not always choose the most hideous thumbnail to put up. Hi Doug, how are you? Hi Lala, how are you? And yes, I am going to do an unboxing here in just a few minutes. Um, I've seen two different ones and I know lots of people have done their boxy charm already so I didn't want to do an actual do it and edit it video. I just wanted to go ahead and do it. I'm glad. Happy Valentine's Day to you guys. I made a um, an exception for today that I was going to allow myself to eat chocolate because you guys know I pretty much gave up sugar and so it was kind of a bizarro thing to eat sugar today after about four months and to be quite honest it made me feel really crappy. <laughs> so um and I have a bunch of it, so I'm going to have to just hide it and put it away because the kids at school gave me a bunch. Hi, purple or blue. Is it purple or blue? And hi, Heather. Thank you guys for joining in. I'm going to wait just a few minutes and let people if, see if people are going to show up before I go into the boxy charm and put on my glasses, my spectacles so I can see. Hi, Charlene. Oh my goodness, I think I would have preferred the Ultimate Feast at Red Lobster, but um, my students, I, I make a joke all the time that I don't eat sugar except for Dove chocolate because that's my favorite, and one of my students gave me this today, <laughs> and so I'm like, oh gosh, this is such kind of danger, like I need to put it somewhere out in the garage where it's on the other side of my van that I can't get to without opening the garage door because, yeah, I ate two of them. But look how many are in here, you guys. Danger, danger, danger. <laughs> anyway, so I got that. And then my friend Becky brought me some today. So my goodness, you guys. Oh, okay. Hi, Purple. Happy Valentine's Day to you guys. And you're probably going to hear my husband's TV. He's kind of deaf. Only whenever I say that he is, does he hear me. Hi, Denny. Oh, man. If someone invites you to lunch, like my rule with lunch and dinner is if I invite somebody, I'm prepared to pay. Unless I say, let's go Dutch. But I'm real old-fashioned when it comes to dating stuff. So, bummer, Charlene. I'm sorry. I think I'm going to wait for four more minutes and then I'll get into the boxy charm. And I think I just kind of casually was glancing over my feed on YouTube and I saw that you did an influencer thing, Denny. So you probably got the same thing that I got, but I haven't even used it yet. I just wanted to show you guys that I got it. I did another influencer campaign a while back and I never did make a video for it. I just put it on my social media. But Dove chocolate, I don't know if you guys have ever had Dove chocolate ice cream bars. It's, it's, they're like this weird shape, but it's covered in Dove chocolate. Oh my gosh. It's like the, it is so yummy. And I'm not even that. Oh man, I don't want it to be that way. That my voice and my, my audio and my video aren't, aren't synced. Is it like that for everybody? Yes, I just got one item. 
And I'm looking over my computer screen if you're wondering why I'm staring somewhere other than the camera. Am I out of sync with everybody else? Okay. And my mouth is matching up. Even whenever you guys said you saw me fine, whenever the replay was on, it still did that. So, bleh, whatever. <laughs> okay. Um, but anyways, I forgot what I was even talking about. Chocolate ice cream bars, I think. Oh, anyways, you know, with my weight issues and all that, sugar and sweets, that was never my problem. Yeah, if you need to refresh, I think that'll help. And now I see a little spinny thing on my face. Okay, so is the refresh for the people that are watching or is the refresh for me? Because I don't even know how to refresh on my live stream thing on my phone because I'm using my phone. But anyway, um, ice cream. Sweets have never been my problem. Pastas, breads, those kind of things were the things that were my weakness. And so I can kind of... Leave it alone. I don't really know what to do about it. Hi, Kelly. Doing great. How are you doing? Hi, Cassie. Yay, I'm glad I waited a little while. I hear Boo Bear. He may join us tonight for a change. All right, I guess I'm just going to roll with it and see how it goes. I know it's annoying. I can't stand to watch it myself whenever I'm out of sync. It drives me insane, but I don't know how to change it. I think if I do anything to my stream, I'll end up... Oh, well, look at that. I somehow just accidentally figured out how to see the messages on my actual phone. Guys, I am not really, I'm pretty tech savvy, so I don't know how things like this evade me, but. I'm afraid that if I go out and come back, oh, okay, you did. Because I'm afraid if I do that, I'm cutting off the stream. That's my thing, is I don't want to cut off the stream. All right, let's get into BoxyCharm. And I'm going to put on glasses for a, li for a little bit so that I don't have to, like, sit here and stare down the card to be able to see. Anyways, I was hoping for the Ofra stuff. I didn't get the Ofra stuff. I was hoping for that. Um, but, yeah, no, I didn't get it. So, um, I'll start with the thing I did get with you guys. I think, I think Lala got this one, too. I was... I couldn't pay full attention when she was unboxing because I was at work and kids were in and out. And But anyways, and this is so blinding and holographic that I don't even, I can't even show you without it just going nuts. But it's the um, Naked Cosmetics Holographic Highlighter Palette. And I actually cheated because I used this this morning. I had seen somebody do a cool thing with stickers on her face. Stephanie Lang is her name. And she put these heart stickers on her face and put highlighter over it. And then these two little hearts appeared. Well, guess what? They didn't appear for me. <laughs> this just wasn't... It, this just didn't show enough for it, to, for it to work. Or I wasn't doing something right. You know, everybody makes it look easy. But anyway, here's the um, highlighter palette. And it's kind of like, reminds me of that... Um, Anastasia Moonchild. <laughs> you know what? I I <laughs> I actually kept it muted whenever you were on because I'm like she's gonna say I'm okay. You know, I can't even say it now because some of the parents of my kids watch me. Sometimes I wonder, you know, in some of those things I, I kind of didn't know if I should tell people about my channel and I didn't really tell people it just kind of some people that knew me outside of school told other people and so there's always a possibility that somebody from my school is going to be on here even maybe my kids and so I have to be and see like this is barely even showing on my hand but I'm not in a real reflective area like I don't have well that's showing pretty good but I don't 
don't know about, I mean, for me, I see myself using these as eyeshadows and inner corner highlights more than I do on my cheeks. How do you guys feel about, like, the purples and the blues and the greens on the cheeks? Like, for me, yeah, it's showing, I think, because my computer screen is reflecting onto this. When I was looking at it right here, like, it didn't show at all, but I can totally see it. But how do you guys feel about putting, like, the colorful ones on your cheeks? Do you like the way that looks? I, I, and Molly, hi, <laughs> and hi, Matthew. Oh, shut up, dude. I need to send this to you. This would highlight your cheekbone, your cheekbone so beautifully, Matthew, don't you think? Maybe the purple one? But anyways, the pink one is the one I tried to use today, and these are definitely holographic, and I like them, but I think I would really like it better just as eyeshadow. <laughs> yeah, you do, but this would, like, accentuate them. But, anyways, I'm glad to have it because I can see myself using it for eyeshadow, and I can see myself also using it for inner corner. And maybe, like, if I did a more eclectic look, I could maybe see myself using this on my cheeks. <laughs> Hi, Becky. She says blue is your color, so I guess for you, then, it would be... That one, but let's see how let's see how it swatches. I actually really would think I would rather use it for eyeshadow. All right, let's see if it's going to show. Okay, what do you think, Matthew? Is that your color? And the reason it's funny, guys, is because even though we all know a lot of guys who do makeup, Matthew is not one of them. So. Of course, I had makeup wipes. I brought them in here just for this purpose, and now I can't find them. Seriously? Seriously? I don't know. You know, I was putting goodie bags together in here last night. It's possible. I don't even know what I did with them. Okay. I guess I'm not going to be swatching a lot, but there's not a whole lot more to swatch. So this thing is $39.99 is the retail price. Can you believe it? Woo! Okay, so blue it is. When I do your makeover, I'll use blue highlighter, okay? Good night. Thank you for coming. Happy Valentine's Day. Enjoy your dinner with Raul. Yeah, I use everything for everything. I don't care what its intended purpose is. If it will work for what I need it to work for, I use it there. I use blush for eyeshadow a lot because I love rosy pinky colors as transition colors. Hello to 802 Vids. And if I missed anybody coming in, hello. Thank you for coming. Okay, next is... The 8,972nd black eyeliner that I've received in a subscription service. Nice to meet you too. Oh, and hello to Zinho Brazilian. I'm probably saying that wrong. But guys, I don't know about this S word or I called it Voldemort the last time. The word that should not be spoken. I don't know about that. But if that's the reason that people are losing those then I'm sorry for that, so I'm not going to say that, but I am going to say, as you guys meet each other in the chat, please go support each other's channels. That's the only way we're going to get, you know, our hours, our subbies, and, and I just said the thing I wasn't supposed to say. But anyways, hey Diego, how are you? I hear that that's part of the reason that they're being removed, so if they're, I don't know if that's true. If it is, then let's just not. Let's just say... I'm supporting you, and that way the other person knows that we're supporting them, and, or Voldemorting is always fine, but that's not going to make, that's not going to make sense to anybody who's not in the room. So here we go. This is a Vintage Cosmetics Smoky Eye Pencil. Retails for $21. Um, it's, you know, I'm not even going to read this little blurb. Let me just kind of swatch it. I'm going to end up with some crazy business on my hand. And you know what? It's not even very creamy. But I am on a mission 
to find a black pencil that will stay in my waterline without pooling down here to the side of my eye and looking, making me look like Alice Cooper. So even though I am not ever excited about black eyeliners because I honestly have that many, I still always think, well, maybe this will be the one. I did. Thank you, Diego. That was really cute. Made me smile. Yeah, support is a good word because that's really what we're doing. Hi, Casey. <laughs> Crazy business isn't all bad, but I don't even know. See, I was telling, I talked to Matthew on the phone last night and I had told him that um, I say things when I'm on when I'm filming or when I'm on live, I don't even realize what I said. I don't even know what I said crazy business about. So, but I have to agree with that statement. This one I was excited about, and I'm glad it was in every box. And this is the Cover FX um, Shimmer Veil. And I, I need to read about this because I don't really know. I think this is like a multi-purpose thing. It, hello, it says these multi-use shimmering cream colors can't are crease-proof enough for the boldest of eye looks. And formulated with a weightless finish for a shimmering effect anywhere on the face suitable for all skin types. I had fun listening to you off and on today, Casey. I don't know why. I do, I put on people's lives at school because I want to support them. But very infrequently do I have one moment that is, that, you know, I, I can pay attention a little bit whenever my kids are not there. But when they are there, my eyes need to be on them. And so very, my breaks without them are very infrequent. But anyway, here's this. I don't know if you guys can see that it's kind of a lilac color. I think the shade is amethyst. Yeah, it's amethyst. And it's kind of a pinky purple. And it really, I kind of, when I saw it, I kind of thought that would be good for a Valentine's Day look. But, you know, it was a miracle and a half just for me to get one Valentine's Day look up. You know what, Denny? I honestly don't either because I, every time I've tried something like this, even Color Pop Super Shock Shadows crease on my lid. But that's also before I started using Painterly Paint Pot, and for some reason that's like my magic potion. That's my primer potion, for real. Oh my gosh, you were on for four hours? Probably just from staring at the screen gave you a headache. Oh, Rona Lynn is here. Hi, thank you. Guys, I've been shopping my stash and I made a crazy long shop my stash video. And when I started realizing how excessive I had been, I decided it was for February and March. So I'm going to kind of put it towards the end of February or a little bit down the road. It may be soon. But I found this Vice, Urban Decay Vice um, lipstick palette. And I was so excited about this and then I never used it. And look how, and I use, uh, my bad. I used this color called Big Bang right here today. It is super pretty, you guys. I actually combined these. Meh. Come on, work with me. I combined these two colors and I used this lip liner called Bittersweet. It's one of those 24 7 Urban Decay ones. But. You know, I thought to myself today, I should just take this to school and leave it there because when I need to retouch, because I put whatever lipstick I'm wearing in my pocket. I put it on my face and put it in my pocket so I can retouch during the day. Um, but I could just keep this in my desk and I would probably have something that I could at least mix and match to, you know, have it have something there all the time and I wouldn't have to transport my lippies back and forth. But I'm kind of weird. So, I think I'm going to use this as, I'm going to try this, Denny, as just like an, like, I thought about actually cutting my crease with this, um, because using concealer and cutting my crease is making things that didn't stay before stay. So, I, I might try that. The thing is, like, when I'm filming, I don't want it to be like a wash. I guess I should show my, mis my mistakes sometimes. I... You know, it just doesn't turn out the way I want it to. But my my filming time is so infrequent that whenever I have time to film, I don't like to experiment that much because 
I don't want it to mess up and be yucky and not entertaining and not turn out pretty because I don't have time to film again. So I'm a little bit safer on my filming videos than I am any other time. I think if I can ever get this to stay online and not lose my internet from my bedroom where I film from my vanity, I, it would be fun, I think, just to have like a live makeup playtime and just sit down and show you guys my crazy process because I really do just sit there and it's like, well, I wonder what this would look like. And I think this would look good with that. And I just kind of, and most of the time it turns out pretty good. But this is $28 retail. I kind of wondered if this was going to be kind of like um, the 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 Stila whatever 18 word name glitter and glow whatever they're called metals magnificent metals but this doesn't have like actual chunky glitters it has it's just shimmery and I kind of like that hi Amy Lynn happy Valentine's Day Oh, cool, you're going to do a cooking video? That would be fun. I like to cook. But my kitchen is usually in 15 shades of uh, dirty, and I don't think I would really want to, people to see it. You guys have all kinds of good ideas. I've really been enjoying your Valentine's Day videos Amy, I've had to watch a lot of them in increments because I've been so flippin' busy and not doing well health-wise. And so I've just been trying to get in what I can get in. All right, we got some crown brushes. And I heard some people say this. Okay, that's how the package came. <laughs> that's kind of like sh perfect for Sherry, you know. Some are a little bit straight, but then there's that cockeyed one that always has to do things in a little bit of a different way. There's a visual representation of Sherry right there. Right there. Anyways, I heard you guys saying these look like wet and wild brushes, and they do look like wet and wild brushes. But I think, I don't know. I have some wet and wild brushes. Do they feel the same as them? I don't really remember. Aww. Happy Valentine's Day, Diego. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Sorry you have to work. I'm glad to be off work. Let me tell you how 19 children hyped up on sugar is not a fun experience. So, it says, Crown Pro Trio Brush Set. Three-piece Pro Brush Trio to contour your face to perfection. The small brush can be used to conceal imperfections and highlight underneath the eyes. The medium-sized brush can be used to sculpt the cheekbones and the perimeter of the face. Finally, the large powder brush can be used to set everything in place. $29.99 is the retail value. Um, hi, Bio X one Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you for stopping in. I appreciate it. I don't know about you guys, but... These don't feel like a trio of $30 brushes. Is it just me? Is it just me, those of you that have this? Is it just me? They feel really hollow and light. I do like that little divot for where you put your finger. I like to have that. Because I hold my brushes really high up. So I like to have that little divot right there. But these don't feel like $30 brushes. I'm sorry, but I'm sorry. Hey, is Becky still here? The other night, my daughter and I were listening to or watching those videos where people are still under anesthesia after having their wisdom teeth taken out. And there was this little pale white, little pale white dude with red hair and freckles and braces. He had to be like 14, 15 years old. And all of a sudden, he got this gangster, <laughs> he had this gangster um, accent. He kept going, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he's like, me and my brother, me and my boy Rocco, you know Rocco. <laughs> It was the funniest thing. It was hilarious. So now I keep catching myself going, I'm sorry. But I'm sorry. These don't feel like $30 brushes to me. And you know, I have some crown brushes that I really like because that's one of the brands that I bought from when I first started out really getting into makeup hardcore because they were, you know, they had those big sets that were inexpensive. I know the white is going to get dirty fast. 
I love white brushes, but they get dirty and then they look hideous and then I feel like I shouldn't be using them on camera because you guys think I'm don't ever wash my brushes when I feel like that's all I ever do is wash brushes. But I do like, I really like the feel of this one. So I am going to give them a try. But I, I get what I was saying to Molly earlier. Hi, works hard. Um, I was saying to Molly and didn't finish is that I'm always torn when it comes to BoxyCharm and things like that because I want to try them out and give you guys a review or at least give you guys, you know, my opinion on these things. So it's hard for me just to go ahead and toss them into a giveaway because I like to do try on videos and I will do a try on like I'll use this stuff in a video for you guys because I do like the try on videos myself but um I wanted to just do the unboxing here anyways I'll give them a try I use, I think I would use this more for an eyeshadow brush I think this would probably be a contour brush for me and I keep seeing myself using this as to set under eye but I don't know I'm really stuck on my beauty blender for that oh it's no fair that not everybody can get this I always feel sad for people who say that they don't ship to wherever they are all right my last item in Kanani right thank you for being here I've seen you in lots of Casey's um, live streams and you're her sister right <laughs> or her friend I think you're her friend or her sister. Anyways, one of those things. You know her. Anyways, welcome to my live stream. Alright, last item. I have a Seraphine, Seraphine Botanical Sugar and Lemon Moisturizing Lip Buffer. Hi, Giggles. And I like this. I like this um, little container. That it came in but it's it's makes th this thing looks really small to come out of something this big I do too I don't like them to be all cruddy looking okay that's it <laughs> you guys can you guys are sisters of the heart then I have lots of sisters of the heart oh boo because I hoped it was good I have I would say that I have a lip scrub on this desk but I'm not even going to attempt to look for it because I know now that I need to show it to you. I like the Milani lip, strip, lip scrub. It smells and tastes like cake, so how can that be bad? And it's like 12 bucks. This retails for $24. <laughs> Anyways, it says a blend of soft sugar crystals with a rich nourishing salve base that gently exfoliates and buffs lips, leaving behind smoother skin with a touch of refreshing lemon zest scent. Made with avocado, apricot, and jojoba oils, as well as shea butter, or shea and cocoa butter, to help rejuvenate and hydrate dry lips, which I need so bad. You guys, I don't even know why, but my lips keep splitting, and all I'm doing is smiling. Like, I'll be doing something, and I'll just smile, and then I will feel my lips split. And it's not even on the exterior part that's usually dry. It's like on the, like the softer inner part. I don't understand why that's happening. No way. No way is there $24 inside this little bitty tube. Just saying. But what did you not like about it, Denny? Yeah, Charlene. There, you know what? I There are so often some really good finds at dollar stores in places that you don't expect. And so, but, you know... Whenever you've dealt with as many brushes as I've dealt with, I can feel it and know if it's a good brush or not. I mean, very infrequently do I get home with a brush and find out after the fact, oh, this isn't as good as I thought it was going to be. I can tell by the way it feels. And I'm kind of one of those people who, I'm, I don't know if anybody agrees with me, but I, I prefer kind of a rougher brush. That's probably why a lot of people don't like Morphe and I love it, because they're a little bit stiffer they're a little bit scratchier and it may be unappealing to some people but for me like there are times I need some grip I need something that's actually going to blend something out and a soft brush a really extremely soft brush isn't going to do that at least not the way that I'm talking about and so I love the way it feels I love soft brushes like but like for example it cosmetics 
I love It Cosmetics and those brushes feel so heavenly soft, but I can't get them to do anything on my face. I can't, like, it's just like, you know, rubbing a feather on it and it's not putting anything where I want it. Yeah, I, I will try it. Let me see if I saw what Denise, oh, not enough scrub. Well, let me open it up and see. I love the, um, it's like, what's the point of a scrub if it's not going to do anything? Just like I'm saying, what's the point of a blending brush if, it's, if it doesn't blend anything? <laughs> oh, wow. It feels extremely emollient, but it doesn't have as much grit as the Milani one that I have, but I think this would work for me. I was, see, and it smells really strongly of lemons. I'm sorry, but I just don't, I just am not a fan of, of citrus scented things. Lemon, orange, I, I'm just not. And I don't know why I put that on my hand. <laughs> With no makeup wipes. It smells like lemon pledge. Sorry. Hi, 420 girl. It made your lips itch. You're making me scared to even try it now. Okay, I know most of you watched my Valentine's Day look video, and I was looking like hot death that day because I was just getting out of a major flare from fibromyalgia, and I, it was everything I could do just to get it filmed. But did you guys hear about my pork skin <laughs> injury? I literally cut my mouth open on a pork skin. And I was telling everybody in the video that I don't eat chips and stuff like that anymore because of the carbs and and sugars and stuff. I don't eat those anymore. But the only thing that is kind of comparable when I really want something like that are those really hot, spicy pork skins. And I just bit down and it like ripped my mouth open right here just from like biting down on one because they're so giant. And the reason I was biting it is because if you put the whole thing in your mouth and you crunch down, it'll like thrash the, the roof of your mouth too. It's dangerous, I tell you. But anyways, so I cut the fire out of my lip right there. So I don't really want to um, put anything that has any kind of abrasive stuff in it. I don't want to put it in there. I don't want to put anything on there right now. I want it to heal. Hi, Tally or Tolly. Your boxy charm, guys. I used to be like the person that subbed to every single subscription service that I could find, right, Charlene? And that's maybe that's my hang up with it. Ooh, that sounds nice, Ronalyn. I thought, why not just use sugar, yeah, in some kind of essential oil and make your own? I think I'll do that next time. My, my. Um, nail girl Victoria makes a, um, a hand scrub that we use when we get our nails done. I love that. Okay, Casey. Um, I was going to tell you about what I got in the influencer box. I very infrequently get influencer, and I think the reason is because I never, in the past, I never had a channel. I never made videos. I never really used my social media to promote it, and that's really what it's for. And if you guys aren't familiar, Influencer is kind of a thing that you go and you survey and they sur they send you questionnaires and they match you up with products for you to test out. And I always seem to get the L'Oreal ones, the skincare ones. And um, so basically you get it for free. But whenever you do a video or, or post it on social media, you have to say, this was given to me from, for free from Influencer for review. And you just have to agree to at least fill out these questionnaires that they send you and you you can opt to make a video which I probably will but I have to have time to use it and this is a leave-in conditioner and so I haven't had a chance to use it yet but I will but I'll read to you guys about it um, I'm kind of a professional hair product snob because I'm a licensed cosmetologist and from the time that I got out of beauty school I could buy professional products at cost and so I just from that time on I was 18 from that time on I've always bought professional products and I'm talking about Redken and Matrix and um Kenra and all those ones that are really expensive at Ulta I can get them at cost and so 
I don't ordinarily use drugstore L'Oreal, you know, anything that you can get at Walmart or CVS. I don't use those most of the time. Um, but anyways, let me tell you about this. It's called Elvive Revive da Damaged Hair. It says styling and heat tools can cause damage resulting in split ends, weakness, roughness, dullness, and dehydration. This leave-in conditioner nourishes with each use to help increase strength, increase flexibility, protect hair against everyday damage. This product will leave hair incredibly soft, resilient, and healthy. It says after shampooing you you apply a small amount of the product to wet hair from length to ends and do not rinse. And this is what I've just, first time I've read this, so I didn't realize this, this was leave-in. I probably could have already used it. I kind of thought it was a um, deep conditioner. They are dangerous. And Kanani, do you understand now what, what influencer is? I kind of ex explained it. But I'm, I'm always of the mindset that I'm not going to use it once and give you my opinion on it. I'm going to use it until the tube's halfway or partially done so that I can give you. I mean, my hair is dry, thin, fine. All the things that you can do, I have like three hairs and they're all dry and frizzy and fine. And so if I can find something that makes it look healthier and doesn't look so fried and frayed on the ends, even though my hair is pretty healthy, it still looks fuzzy. It looks like an afro every day. That's why I wear it like this all the time. Um, and my hair is too sensitive to chemical process to do anything as far as, you know, permanently wave it or do any kind of major color like, um, you know, however you say that, lyolage or... <laughs> How do you say that? I know it's not biolage. It's like that word though. But anyways, my hair would run screaming off of my head if I even attempted to put some crazy color on it like I would like to. But anyways, we'll see. If it does something good, you know I'll talk about it because if it does something good to my hair, then it's some kind of magic. Some kind of magic in the bottle. So we'll see what happens. But... Yes, you should. And like I said, you know, I've probably been, I've probably been, um, signed up for Influencer for about, I have a cat hair on my mouth somewhere or some kind of hair. I've been with Influencer probably five years now. And I think I've been part of like six or seven campaigns, um, there are a lot of things that you can do that increase the likelihood like post pictures of the product on Instagram. And I was all excited because they finally got an, a phone app. And I was like, yeah, I'm finally going to be able to post a picture on Instagram of, of my influencer. And it kept giving me an error message repeatedly. So I'm just like, I give, you know, I don't have time to try to figure out why my picture isn't posting on your app. I'm just not going to do it. So um, if you're somebody who will do a video immediately or somebody who... Um, is willing to promote the products or at least show that they've gotten them on on social media through pictures and stuff you're much more likely to get it probably more often than I do but I was gonna add up the the value of this boxy charm because I'm just curious and I'm just gonna round them and I'm using my little calculate tour here on my computer and then you guys can be thinking up some questions for me all right, roughly $143 for a $21 box, so I'm always cool with that. I like, what I like about BoxyCharm is they, you know, there's always at least one product that I'm really happy about, and in in this one, I'm really happy about that Cover FX Shimmer stuff. I'm excited to try that. Um, and I'm not disappointed in the highlighter palette because, like I said, I'll use it for eyeshadow. But I feel like no matter what, I get my money's worth. And whenever I was subscribing, I've started a lot of things that I didn't finish. When I was subscribing to Ipsy and Birchbox and all the other ones, Lip Monthly, I had all these different subscriptions. I found that I, I was putting all of the things that I got in these things in a, in a giveaway. I was giving them all away or they were getting stuck in a drawer and I wasn't using them. I just wasn't much for using little bitty samples. 
Um, now I do get Sephora Play, I get BoxyCharm, and I get Morphe Me. And that's what I weeded out all the others that didn't work for me. Those were the three that did. And so I kept on. Hello, ph Phenomenal. I will. That's one thing that's not fun about bright pink lipstick is if you need to get something off, like if you have a little hair on your mouth like I do right now, it's driving me, in cra driving me insane. In crazy is what I said, insane and crazy. Huh. Um, yeah, you get it all over your fingernails and your fingers and everything else. Oh, I guess they just came in for some self-promotion. <laughs> Yes, you're welcome for letting and you know letting you use our live stream as a quick pr 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 that was a one of those um, those ads that pop up in the middle of your video. That's what that was. <laughs> Thank you. Works hard. Thank you for stopping by. All right, guys. I spend most of my time going back and forth and showing you things when I'm on the live stream. So I thought that I would spend the rest of the time just kind of chatting with you and seeing if you guys had any questions. Kind of do an informal Q&A. See, I look like a really sweet, nice, charming lady. But, um, hey, Red Dragon. I have, you know, there's some spunk and some sass up in here. And when people are kind of rude, it, my friend, one of my friends calls it ghetto gangster. <laughs> he said, you go ghetto gangster on people. And, yeah, sometimes I do. I'm one of those people that will take a lot, and it takes a lot to get me mad. But when, I call it my monkey switch. Once my monkey switch gets flipped, then, like, there's no turning back. So don't flip the switch, dude. And people just being, you know, kind of inconsiderate and rude in situations like this. It didn't flip the switch. It just kind of toggled with it a little bit. Hey, gotta love carpet pythons. Doing great. How are you? Thank you for joining. Thank you, Ronna Lynn. Glad you did. I actually watched a couple of your videos the other day, even though, and I'm sorry to say this to you, but even though I am very scared of snakes. Hey, Eric, how are you? No, I am totally like, I'm totally saying that, Casey. That was super rude. <laughs> and I don't get bent out of shape over much, but that was super rude. Now, if you come in and hang out and just say, hey, I'm giving you a like. I'm here to, you know, support you. If you wouldn't mind checking out my video, thanks. And hang out for a few minutes at least. Even pretend. Yeah, I am doing so much better. Thank you. I had a rough 10 days. Of just, and I don't know how much you guys know about fibromyalgia, but it's just this weird, crazy disease that's different for every person that has it. There's no rhyme or reason to the reason the pain comes. There's no rhyme or reason to the to the way the pain goes. It just, it's a chronic pain issue um, that I have tried every kind of therapy, every kind of medication, every kind of everything trying to manage. And um, I am... Uh, I manage it very well for the most part, and but every once in a while I have a massive flare, and it usually coincides with a with a roller coaster temperature thing. Like one day it's thirty, one day it's seventy five, the next day it bottoms out, and then it's forty for three days, and then it's ninety two, and then it's twelve. That's how Oklahoma weather is, and Amy can probably testify to this because Kansas is real similar to that. Um, but that's that's usually what triggers these. And once my body gets really mad, it doesn't just stop being mad. <laughs> it stays mad for a long time. And it takes me a long time to get past it. And I'm so thankful to be past it. Yeah, I, you know, I actually, I don't like being fearful of anything. And I want to overcome it whenever I am. And so my friend Reggie and I, got together because he was scared of cats and I was scared of snakes and he had ball pythons and I had a cat. And so, excuse me, we made an agreement to go to, he came to my apartment and I held the snake and he held the cat for like five minutes. And I did so well 
and I wasn't, I was scared. I was holding it way out from my body, but I was holding it and I was fine with it until the girl, his wife, Yorma, put it down in this basket and they left the room. I'm like, you're leaving the snake here. She's like, oh, he won't do anything. And the minute she walked out of the room, he like went up, you know how they do, like a cobra, went up like this and was looking at me. And I was like paralyzed. <laughs> Like, I cannot move. I'm like, Yorma, Yorma, your snake. You've got to come. You have to. I told you you shouldn't leave me alone with this thing. Oh, man. I'm sorry about migraines. Oh, is Ronna Lynn leaving? Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. It was good to see you. And so he held the cat. And he, in... And I held the snake. He didn't get over the, the fear. I just kind of, I don't know if you guys know, but almost always during a school year, they will bring some kind of thing with pets. And it's usually tarantulas, snakes, you know, hissing cockroaches. It's always, and they always choose a teacher to be the person that has to have that thing on them. And so I always volunteer for like the hissing cockroach or the tarantula because I know there's a snake and I don't want to be up in front of the entire school and like pee my pants because they put a snake around my neck. Oh my goodness. Anyways, I still prefer to not be around snakes. <laughs> See, and I'm not that scared of spiders. Now, I don't want one crawling up my arm, okay? I don't want any of that kind of business. But I, I like, if there's one on the wall, I'm not flipping my lid and running out of the room. But I guess we all have our things, right? You know what, Eric? I wasn't... Eric has some really good videos. He shows draw bridges and different ships, and I've been watching them here and there. Um, but as I'm watching them, most of the time I have an earphone in, and as I'm watching them, all of a sudden there will be this horn. I'm like, ah! Like, it makes me come out of my skin every time. And it's funny because in a lot of his videos, he it scares him too, and he jumps too. <laughs> Roaches? Um, yeah. Yeah, me and roaches, I, I am creeped out fully by roaches. And I think because I had um, a guy that I was dating, we went, and this was a long time ago, like 20 years ago. Um, we went to his sister and, and brother-in-law's apartment and we were helping them move. And there were roaches coming out of every place that they could come out of. They had nested behind their pictures on the wall. They were in the cracks of their table. They they were everywhere. And we were helping them move. And I was so, like, not trying to be mean, but fully sicked out to the point where, like, I was about to vomit. It was so disgusting. You know what? I don't have any basis to compare it to, Eric, but all the ships look giant to me. I've never seen ships like that before. I've never seen any ships like that before. And so they're all new to me. Thank you for coming, Cassie. <gasps> Roaches that fly. Roaches that fly. Is that what you're talking about? Because we have these things called June bugs or they're palmetto bugs, I guess is the actual name of them. And they fly directly into your face. They'll get stuck in your hair. They crawl up your pant legs. Like I cannot do it. And I will, I mean, I literally, my dad's baseball team was playing at Oral Roberts University, which is in Tulsa. And their whole campus is way lit up. Everything's lit up. And so at night games, the June bugs just, there's, they're everywhere. And I was probably about eight and they started crawling up my pant legs and I stripped from, I stripped out of my pants right there in front of an entire crowd of people that was coming out of a baseball game, stripped because those suckers were, and you know, they have those little hooky feet that like get caught on. Ugh. Anyways, I couldn't get them out of my pants. And so I came out of my pants. 
That's really cool. No, seriously. My mom, who is like, you know, that was not cool with my mom. <laughs> that I came out of my pants in the middle of a crowd of people. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. What's your, what's your first name? Carpet Python Lady. So I can call you by name. And most of the time I remember. If I don't, give me a couple times. But most of the time I remember. B-52 Rocha. See, that makes me have chills up my back. <gasps> oh my gosh. See, I am such a girl when it comes to some of that stuff. I can't even, and one that flies, that's the thing that I hate about the June bugs is they're unpredictable. And you never know when they're going to fly directly into your face. All right, Gay, it was very nice to talk to you. Thank you for coming by. I'll remember that because I love Marvin Gay. So I'll try to associate my memory. Oh my gosh, I, yeah, me and Roaches, no. No, thank you. I think the thing that flips me out so much about roaches is the fact that they can multiply like guppies. My husband thought he was being really funny when we first moved into our first house together and told me there was a snake in our backyard and I didn't go out there anymore. And he asked me to go out there and feed the dog and I said, I'm not going out there. And he's like, what do you mean you're not going out there? I said, you said there was a snake out there. And he says, so you're not going out there ever again? I'm like, no, I'm not ever going out there again. And I don't know if he was telling me the truth because he told me he was just messing with me that there wasn't really a snake or if he just told me that he was messing with me so I'd go in the backyard again. But like, if there's evidence that there was a snake there, I'm not going there. I don't care. I'm not going where I know there's been a snake. <laughs> And see, if something touches me that I don't want to touch me or takes me by surprise, I scream bloody murder. Hi, Robin. How are you doing? Yeah, I would I would understand getting scared of bees if you're allergic to them. Especially, you'd be scared to death of bees. That is so not funny. Um, My friend Becky's ex-husband, Terry was a very hairy man and he put a gym bug down my shirt and I couldn't even get it out. Like I practically came undressed that day and not that I have the propensity to do that. Okay. I don't come undressed often. Okay. I've said in 15 minutes, I've said two stories about how I came out of my clothes and almost came out of my clothes. Not a regular occurrence around here. I promise you. But anyway, I grabbed a hold of his chest hair and pulled out a handful of chest hair because he put, I think he was a little bald right here from that point on because he put it down my shirt. It was not funny. Not funny. Not funny. All right. So do you guys have any questions? I know I'm such a thoroughly interesting person. You have so many things that you're so, so curious about me about, right? I thought all of that is so pretty to me, Eric, because I live in Oklahoma. Flat, there's, it's dry, the, everything's brown, like there's nothing pretty. <laughs> there's nothing pretty to look at, I promise you. And so all of that looks beautiful to me. All of that is interesting and so different than what I see. It was beautiful. All of it. Any, I love water. I love the ocean. I love lakes. I love all that stuff. And so, all that looks like a place I would love to visit. No bugs. That's what I loved about Colorado, you guys. I lived in Colorado for three years in southern Colorado and Pueblo. And there aren't flies. There aren't bugs. You don't see bugs. There's not things crawling around in your apartment. You don't see ants and there's like none of that stuff the only thing that they have is once a year it's a seasonal thing they have miller moths and i mean massive amounts of moths that you can't even believe how many moths there are but it's for like a month and all the birds eat it up and get fat and um you know it's the keeping the keeping the birds alive thing seasonal thing but 
I, when I got back to Oklahoma, I was like, man, I so don't miss, I so miss not having any bugs. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. There's not a lot to see. You know, we do have some mountains and there are some pretty areas, but they're not where I am. What, where I am is flat, dry, brown, and not pretty. And I probably shouldn't say that. There are pretty areas around here, but you have to travel to get to them. But the majority of what you see is, is not that attractive. Oh, I can take my glasses off. The reason I don't like to wear glasses on live stream is because I can see my, the, the screen of my computer reflected in the glasses. It bugs me. So, questions. Anybody, anybody have anything they want to ask me? Hypothetical questions? My brain's done, so I, I can't even think of anything else to talk about. Oh, you want to know what's on my eyes? I think it turned out pretty today. I, I was wanting it to be still kind of Valentine's Eve, but I wasn't about to go to the extent that I did <laughs> on my video. But this is Huda Beauty um, Desert Dusk. You guys, I love that palette so much. I love it. I could use it every single day. Oh my gosh, 700 feet. See, I can look at it, but I can't gauge the size. I don't know how far away you are, etc. Um, oh man, I don't even have it. I don't have it in here. I got a teal green, kind of a tealish turquoise color that was, oh, it was beautiful. I don't have any tattoos, and I'll tell you why here in a second. Um, I got... It was almost a combination of mauve and purple, but it was kind of like a dusty purple. I got a holographic silver and a holographic gold and then a hot pink, kind of a mid-tone pink, and then the light one that I used. And it was all less than $20. I'm excited because when I do, I, I've reached 500 subscribers a lot faster than I anticipated. Um, and so I'm, I'm gathering stuff for my 500 subby giveaway right now. Um, the tattoo things. I'm 46, and when I would turn 40, my friend Becky and I said we were going to get a tattoo. Well, I'm 46, and I don't have one. And let me tell you why. I am very OCD about symmetry. I need whatever is happening on this side to happen on this side. Like, I don't like to have two candles on the left of something and four on the on the right. It needs to be two candles and two candles. And visually, those things, it, it bugs me. Um, and so I, I, I was always concerned that if the artist actually, if there was a, a, a little part on one side that was different than the other side, it would drive me crazy and it would be on my body forever. So my other thought was, okay, then I'll ha I will intentionally choose an asymmetrical tattoo so that I won't be looking for it to look the same on both sides. It is, and I'll get more, but I'm excited to give some of it away too because I have three of each color. I can give it. I can give some of it away. Yeah, you know, I I yeah, I mean, I have some stuff, but not as much that. Not as much as I would want to give in a 500 or a 1,000 giveaway. And maybe I should be shooting for the 1K because that's the big deal now. Um, and by that time, I could have a lot gathered. But being on a no-buy intentionally on purpose to save money is not the time that I need to be buying a bunch of stuff for a giveaway either. I just wasn't expecting it to come that quickly. But um, anyways, so I don't know about the tattoo. I know there's a couple different things. I know the wording that I want. Um, there's a couple ideas, but until I know for sure, um, until I know for sure, I'm not going to do it. I had an idea the other day, and that's what's, that's how I learned about Kat Von D to begin with, is I used to watch her tattooing show, and I love to watch it because they are so, I love to hear the story behind the tattoos. And I used to think it was super cheesy to put tattoos of your dogs on your body of a dog that had passed, but... There were so many stories about people and their dogs, and they had their dog tattooed on their body. And if you guys know, I had a 
150 pound Great Pyrenees named Marley and she was nine and a half years old and she got poisoned by something in our yard or somebody poisoned her. We don't know what happened, but she was poisoned and we lost her in July and that was heartbreaking to me. I'm still heartbroken. I cannot get over being heartbroken over her. I miss her so bad. I miss her every single day. Like when I think about it still, I almost cry. Because I miss her so much. She was one of those dogs that no matter where I was. In fact, if you go back to the very beginning of my playlist, you'll see her. She's laying in on the floor of all my videos. Probably the first 10, 20 videos, she's there. Or I'm griping at her for huffing. like Because when she would get hot, she'd sit and pant in my room. And it would be all loud in my video. Um... And I would be complaining about her, which makes me feel bad now. But anyway, I would be trying to get her to quit panting so she <laughs> wouldn't be making noise in my video. But I miss her so much, you guys. There's a little, uh, probably a six-month-old Great Pyrenees in a yard near my school. And every time I drive by, I'm like, hi, Marley. And it just gives me a heartbreak every time. But I have a picture of her, and if you, I don't know if you guys know about Great Pyrenees, but they're these giant, white, fluffy dogs. They're giant. Like her, when she was standing on, on her four legs, her head came up past my, I don't know, past my mid arm. I don't, she's giant, 150 pounds. But anyway, um, when she was a baby, we got her when she was three months old and I fell in love with her immediately. But I have this picture of her on the very first day we brought her home and she's laying on the floor with her little head in between her big giant paws and she was asleep, and I I saw that picture the other, the other day, and I was like, I would totally get that tattooed on my body. Like, if I was going to get a picture of my pet, it would be her, and it would be that. Because that's my, you know, that was my first memory of her. It was my very first day with her, and ugh, see, I feel like crying right now just because I miss her so much. Yeah. I don't even know how to get over it. Like, I've never been that way. I've all, I've had lots of pets that I've lost. I've had lots of dogs that I've lost. And I love them all like I loved her. But I don't know what it is about her that I can't get past the fact that she's gone. Um, I can't get another Great Pyrenees because toward the end of her life, it was getting really difficult for us to manage her because whenever she needed to go to the vet and whenever we needed to get her somewhere, I had to have somebody come help me get her in and out of the vehicle. Um, her size became unmanageable for me with my health issues and my husband's wheelchair bound. So that kind of situation just, it, it wasn't, we did what we had to do for her, but it was really difficult. So we would never get another one, which makes me even more sad because I'd love to get another one. It's just not feasible for us now. And so I just miss her. Um... I mean, I would love just to have that picture of her on me somewhere. And I don't even know where, but it would have to be somewhere I could see. Like, I don't want it on my back. Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry, Amy. I'm sorry for everybody because I can't believe, I mean, for me, I have stepchildren. They're, they're grown and out of the house and I have grandbabies and all those things, but... I always feel like since I didn't have biological children that my fur babies were my children. So I felt like I lost my child. But I have my, uh, we, in our dining area, there's like a recessed ceiling and there's this giant chandelier thing that hangs down. And so since we've lived in this house, we've lost three babies, two kitties and, and Marley. And so I have their collars hanging from our really fancy chandelier. I have really crusty dog and cat collars hanging from it. So, at least every time I walk through there, I I see them or think of them. Yeah, that's really cool that they have the jewelry that you can put in the, or the ashes in the jewelry now. Especially something that would be right by your heart. I'm, as you can see, I'm super sentimental about things like that. I am super sentimental. I have... <sighs> Anyways, so I miss Marley, and so I think that would be a beautiful thing to do um, for her because, you know, just to remember her. Um, on one of the tattoo shows that I was talking about, there was a lady, and this was before I had Marley, 
um, had a Newfoundland, which is like basically the black alternative to the white Great Pyrenees is a black Newfoundland, which they're, oh my, they're so gorgeous. Um, and this lady was telling, it was this tiny little Asian, beautiful little Asian woman. And she, little bitty Asian woman with this giant dog. But this dog was her protector and everything else. It was such a beautiful story. And she had a picture of him, of him reclined on her entire arm. It was it was so sweet. That's good. So my husband and I are probably not going to get a dog because we can't agree on what kind we could get for me. I would have to get, I said the next dog I get is going to have to be able to be lifted and put in a sink to wash. It's going to have to be something that I can carry and it's not a burden to me to try to pick it up. Um, my fibro issues for some reason, reaching like reaching, really stretching and reaching and lifting are like the fastest ways to throw me into a flare. And so I avoid that. But when my dog is sick, I'm doing what I have to do to get her where she needs to go. But I need a small dog and he hates small yappy dogs. Um, you know, yip, 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 like poodles and yippy yappy dogs. Um, and so he's not about having a small dog. And even like a, we had a golden retriever at one time, even she would be too big now. I need to, I need to be able to wash them in something in the sink <laughs> where I can pick them up and put them in there. Or at least they're small enough where I can pick them up and take them to the groomer. And it's not going to cost me $200. Like people wanted me to pay $100, $200 to get Marley groomed because it, they have a massive undercoat and they shed nonstop. Their coat is like a conveyor belt. And so it just kind of moves down the the hair and then falls off in clumps. So it was nonstop. Um, but yeah, I actually thought about Shih Tzus. I thought about Maltese. I thought about uh, Yorkshire Terriers. But I, I'm pretty sure Yorkshire Terriers are very yappy. But they're really cute. Um, Pomeranians are really cute. But all those are like not manly dogs. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He wants a manly dog, but you know, it had, you know, since he, he doesn't drive. And so for me, like everything that has to be done for the dogs, it would be me. And so it has to be manageable for me. And if it can't be, then I, I would rather not have one. I'm a responsible pet owner. If I can't take care of it in the best way possible, then I'm not going to get it. And I felt even at the end of Marley's life that I didn't take care of her as well as I could as well as I wanted to because I couldn't like take her to get her groomed. I couldn't take her to the vet without assistance, like all those things. Um, McDeshiznet, MC Deshiznet, my bad. I always see MC and think Mc, whatever, McNugget, <laughs> Mc, Big Mac. I don't know what I'm thinking about. Um, about McDonald's for because I d do not like McDonald's at all. It's the only fast food in our little bitty town except for Sonic, and I don't like either one of them. Yeah. I think, you know what, I don't know about you guys, but I have found that most dogs kind of take on the persona, that's not the right word, kind of the atmosphere that the dog is raised in, they kind of adapt to that, and if they're in a really high-strung, crazy, you know, panic-stricken situation, then they're going to be nervous and upset all the time. And I think a lot of times if you have kind of a low-key, down to, I don't know how to explain it, calm situation, I think they adapt that way too. <clears throat> I'm actually not hungry at all because it's Valentine's Day and I let myself have chocolate and stuff today and like I have chocolate everywhere and I don't even want it. I really, really don't. Shannon's here. Hi, Shannon and Kimberly Rose. Hello. I'm really not even hungry. I really would prefer to not eat ever again after eating chocolate as much as I did today. And Shannon, you know what? You said you tagged me in something. If you did and it's already posted, let me know which one it is because I have been all around the world and back this week. I have been scattered in 800 different directions. So if I saw it, I don't think I saw it. You love my hair? You must be talking to somebody else. You must be talking to Shannon.
Oh man, I took them out of here. I was going to show you guys, but I started, I made myself these little bands to go around my buns. This is a black one, so you can't even hardly see that it's a rose. But I bought these. My hair? My three hairs up in this. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. My name is Sherry, by the way. Um, anyways, I I made some. I made all kinds of different ones. We went, Kat, Becky went to Hobby Lobby and bought a bunch of flowers. I have some pink ones and purple. Thank you. I feel so happy. Somebody said something nice about my fuzzy afro in a bun. <laughs> I am not a fan of my hair, you guys. And I spend so much time on my face that I don't do much to my hair. And I don't like it to be in my face at school. So this just works for me. That's the reason you usually see it in a bun. If you see it down, it's usually the weekend. And I love dry shampoo. That's the best invention ever in life is dry shampoo. I used to wash my hair every single day. And it made it so unhealthy. Okay, I'll be looking for it, Shannon. I just didn't. I was afraid that you posted it and I missed it. Um, that happens to me. No problem, Casey. I don't know about you guys, but as many people as I'm trying to support, it got really overwhelming. And so I've kind of changed it to where I have three or four people that I, you know, I stream their channel. I roll their playlists. I do it two or three or four. I just start them before I leave for work. And so I feel like I'm in a rotation of doing those people that are, I'm returning the favor to those people that are supporting me. Um, I'm not trying to be hateful about it, but I'm probably not going to dedicate an entire day of streaming to someone who doesn't ever come and watch and comment on my videos. Not because I'm being ugly, but because it just, I don't think of them. I don't see their name. It doesn't come to mind for me whenever I'm choosing who I'm and I actually have a list of people who give me a lot of support. Even if it's once in a while you come in and comment on my video. But if I never see that you're ever watching my channel, then I'm I'm not going to spend a lot of time streaming your channel. You know? And that sounds, I don't know, that sounds kind of yucky. But it's it, that's kind of in the business that we're in here, you guys. That, you know, I'm going to support the people that are supporting me. I'm going to support the people that are here in my stream. I'm going to remember your name. Because you're here talking to me. You know? We're going to have a relationship and all that stuff. We're going to have a relationship. <laughs> but it got overwhelming because I was meeting so many new people that there was no way I could watch everybody's videos. And in the process of all these new people that I was supporting, I ended up having trouble, like I was missing people's videos that I usually watched every time. And I don't like that. Well, I'm going to watch them all. <laughs> and that's the thing. I want you guys to know that if I tell you that I'm watching your videos, I really am. And there are a lot of times I have them rolling while I'm at work and I'm working while I'm listening to them. Um, like during my plan time or whatever, I'm doing my plans or I'm doing whatever and I'm listening to them. And there are times I just can't, um, I can't comment. And sometimes I might make my way back and comment, but sometimes I don't. <laughs> I mean, I intend to. I've been watching the, I've been using the watch later function on the playlist thing a lot because then I can get back to something I didn't get to finish. And sometimes it just gets so busy that I can't, you know. And if we're going to be supporting so many people, I'm just not always going to be able to. And I, I kind of have to limit it to the people that are making themselves known in, in my YouTube life. Um, I don't, you know, I, I have a full-time job. This is my side gig, you know. And I don't have a lot of free time. And my we my weekends are, are very busy um, catching up on all the things that I don't have time to do during the week. Yeah, I love that because if I tried to get back to a video that was amongst 20 that I watched or had rolling that day, I will never find it again. And I don't have the time to be searching for it either. But it's only Wednesday. 
I totally live for Friday, you guys, especially on weeks like this because when we have a party at school or some kind of special event, like, you lose the kids for the whole week. It's, you can't reel them back in. They're all on sugar highs and you can't reel them back in to do any real work. How cute is this? This is the ribbon that Becky put around my little dove chocolates thing. I didn't even notice that was a whole bunch of different hearts. She's very fancy and artistic. I'm going to get her in a video soon. I told her we could just do a get ready with me. Oh, thank you, honey bee. I appreciate you stopping by. Good to see you. And yeah, guys, I'm actually getting ready probably this weekend to film my February Heart to Heart. And the whole thing is going to be about what we can do to support each other. Because I think most people know, but some people don't. You know, there are a lot of things that you can do to support each other. And even very simple things, sharing is one thing that I think a lot of people don't do. And that's an engagement thing that is recognized. Um, my thing is, my number one thing is, and I'll talk about this more in depth, is that if I'm going to take the time to click on somebody's video, even if I don't have time to watch it in its entirety at that moment, I'm still going to let it roll in its entirety. I'm going to roll through the entire video. I'm not going to watch it for a minute and click out of it. Um, because that person needs the watch time. I could have sworn I just saw a cat. There you are. Can you guys see Boo Bear back there? <laughs> he's acting like he's so bashful and he's so not. But anyway, maybe he'll come up here in a little while. But just let it roll. Let it roll for the entirety of the video because what's important is the engagement time, the watch time, the percentage of time, like let's say it's 10 minutes and they only watch 10% of your video and that happens every time, then that's 10% average watched when obviously you want a much higher number, 50%, 75, seven, good Lord, I can't talk, 75% average of people watching your whole video. And, you know, I'm a terrible person to ask that, for me to ask that of you because my videos are really long because I just cannot make a short video. I am incrementally working my way down, but I'm just not good at short videos. I talk too much. I said it. I talk too much. But I think the fact that most of my videos are like educational because I'm a teacher and it's all about the tutorial and showing each step. I have people who tell me that my videos are way too long and I have people that thank me for going so in depth into every little detail of how to do it. And so, if it ain't your thing, it ain't your thing. But if you love me, let it roll. <laughs> and see, I love long videos. I am so, if I love somebody's channel, then I am so excited about watching their video. And it's like, I get disappointed. I mean, a couple of my favorites are Emily Noel and Coffee Break with Danny. Well, Coffee Break with Danny puts up like an over an hour vlog every or every other weekend. And I am still sad when it's over after an hour. And whenever um, Emily Noel does like a, what I call makeup discovery, kind of like a playtime video and it's like 30 minutes, like I'm all jazzed that I get to watch her for 30 minutes. So you would hope that you're that engaging, that somebody's excited that you have a long video and that, but you know, the truth is people are going to complain about whatever it is. If your, if your video was 30 seconds, it would be way too, your videos are too short. If your video is an hour, your video is too long. It doesn't matter what you do. People, there's going to be somebody who's going to complain about it. And hello, Hannah, and thank you. He is rotten as the day is long. I call him my heathen child. He has thrashed all my furniture. <laughs> He is a tyrant and a constant um, irritant to his brother Eli. And I love him to the moon and back. Hello, Simply Life of Me. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, I love him like no other. And I found out, he's like, I've told this story about him before. He was lost in my friend's car. And that's how we got him. But I found out after that, I read a, a thing on the Humane Society and the stat in that 
was that 70% of cats that are euthanized are black cats because they have an evil or negative witchcraft connotation attached to them. And so every cat that I get from now on will be black. I will go to the Humane Society or the shelter and intentionally pick out the black cats because if they're if they're getting killed just because they have a you know bad connotation attached to them that's not even fair and I will just say one each time it's time for me to get a new kitty. Hey Bruce, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. But yeah. He is I call it, his his name was Destiny, which is totally a girl name. But we named him that because he showed up at our house under some, in, stuck in somebody's car. It was Destiny that he came to be our kitty cat. But then we called him Desi and that didn't really fit. And I, you know, I make Goo Goo talk to him like he's a little baby thing. And I called him my Boo Bear. And ever since then, I just call him Boo Bear. No problem, Casey. People have lives. It's okay. <laughs> do what you need to do. And that's what I was talking about, though. Even on live streams, I in the daytime especially, I can't pay attention. But I'm going to click you on. I'm going to let you roll. Let you get your time. Because if I could have, um, if I did have the time to listen to the whole thing, I would. But it, even if I don't, I'm totally going to let you roll. Okay. Oh, and let me tell you guys what we're doing in my beauty group. I don't know if you guys would be interested, but in my be my beauty group on Facebook is called The Beauty Within, and it's posted in my info box on every one of my videos. Um, anyways, one of the girls in there named Christy told me about something that she did in an another makeup group, and I thought it would be so much fun, and it would be fun for people who do videos, and, and it would be fun for people who don't. But she called it... Um, palette roulette and what you do is you choose six palettes and if you don't have six palettes which we're not even going to talk about how my I have more than six palettes but if you don't have six palettes then you take three and number them one two three four five six you know like you would have one and four and two and five and three and six would be this you know they'd be the same one attached to two different numbers but basically the premise behind it take the six palettes and then I roll the dice um I roll the dice and the first die is going to tell you which palette number and the second die is going to tell you how many shades you have to use and dudes I'm not even kidding the very first roll was six and six so the very first, we're going to do it for a month. We're going to do it once a week for a month, Monday to Monday. And in my beauty group, we're going to post pictures. And sometime at the end of it, I'm going to post a video showing you all the looks that everybody came up with. Um, and just, it's just a fun thing just to, to get you to kind of shop your stash and use some of the, some of the palettes you haven't used in a long time. Um, same thing, Kimberly, if you... If you can find six makeup products, it doesn't necessarily have to be a palette, but if you have something like a eyeshadow single or something like that, or if you can maybe n number the last one five and six, and then a, if I roll a five or a six, you would use that one. I mean, it's totally adaptable. We're not locked into these rules, but I think it would be so much fun. Um, and And if you wanted to film it, film it and we could kind of make it a little bit of a collab for everybody to do together whoever wants to do it and you could use it as an, a video idea for your channel and you know it would be a way to get people's instagrams and things out you could throw in info with the other people that are participating whatever it was just she suggested it and i was all about it because i was trying to get people to be more active there you guys, when I call myself a makeup geek, when I say I geek out on makeup, I'm totally not kidding. I could talk about it for 18 hours straight and never get tired and never run out of things to say. And so in a beauty group or on my channel, which that's really happening in my comments now so much. I love the community that's building on my channel, but um, in the Facebook group, not so much. And Facebook, the reason I include the Facebook group is because it's something that can be done at a time when people have time. It's not time sensitive. It's not right when you post the video. It's not, you know what I mean? It's not 
having to be there for the live stream. It's something that people can do whenever they have time to look at it. But um, I was trying to get people to be more active there. And so challenges are a way to get people to be active most of the time. And it's kind of growing there. And, and I don't know what Facebook did, but they sent a whole bunch of people my way. So it's been steadily growing. There's like 135 people in there or something now. So, and, and some of them geek out on makeup as much as I do, so we can talk about it, and we make suggestions to each other, and show our daily makeup, and it's a lot of fun. So, if you guys are interested in something like that, it's the the beauty within, and it's listed in all my info boxes. I'll put it in this one once this posts. Yeah, and I love, I love um, Facebook makeup groups, because a lot of the people that I watch, I found out about either from somebody suggesting them or um, from, you know, a, a video that came behind one of the ones that that I watched from a suggestion. And I've got to get better at it. But, you know, it is with me not being well and being in a flare and me having so much going on at school, conferences and parties and all that stuff, it hasn't been a good time with for me to be... <laughs> Um, up to date on who I'm watching and what I'm, you know, what I'm trying to do. I, I always maintain that I'm going to answer every comment that someone leaves on my videos. It might be a few hours later, but I'm going to answer every comment. I'm going to acknowledge that you took the time to come watch my video and leave a message for me. Um, I'm always going to do that as long as I can manage it. But the other stuff I've kind of had to fit in here and there and haven't done a great job of it. Hi, Heidi Ann. Thank you for being here. And so, you know, that's what I love about these live streams, though, is that you can just kind of, you can do it sporadically whenever you feel like it. I, I was actually going to, uh, to schedule this and send out a little thing on Instagram and Facebook, but I couldn't make up my mind if I was going to have the energy to do it because I was so worn out from the day. Um, and when I got home, I literally sat in the recliner and fell asleep for like an hour. So when I woke up, I was like, yay, now I feel better. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And then my friend Becky was going to come by and I didn't want to start the live stream and have to tell you guys, hang on, let me go answer the door. So I waited until she came. Um, hey Sarah, how are you? So yeah, definitely you guys support each other and... If you guys haven't met, meet each other <laughs> and go support each other the best you can. And if you have, most of you obviously are subscribed to me if you're coming into this stream. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to try to live stream more often. I enjoy it so much. I really do. I love interacting with you guys and it's just a way to meet new people. I think a lot of people are coming into live streams of genres that aren't, <laughs> aren't necessarily their thing. Um, last night I went into one just to have something on in the background while I was uh, doing my goodie bags for my kids and they were talking about drones. <laughs> and let me tell you, I don't know a thing about a drone and I probably won't ever have a drone, but it was kind of interesting to hear what they were saying. So I think we're all kind of figuring out and just like Eric, I don't know if Eric's still here, but I would never watch anything about ships and drawbridges. Okay. That would never be my choice. But since I'm supporting him and rolling through his videos, I've actually gotten to be quite interested in the things that he's showing, except for the fact that you don't know when the horn's going to go. He does put timestamps so that you know when it's going to honk, but I'm not looking at that. I'm listening to it most of the time and I'm just glancing up from time to time. And so that horn makes me come out of my skin <coughs> excuse me and the flu and strep is running rampant through my school and I'm I mean pray for me that I do not get it guys I cannot take like something else being wrong with me definitely definitely support each other this is a really good networking tool um, I don't necessarily think that they intended for us to use it that way, but I didn't necessarily intend for them to come and tell me that what they told me was good enough a minute ago ain't good enough now. See, 
I was talking about the sass and the spunk and the ghetto gangster thing that comes out. That that was it right there. That was a very um, subtle example. It gets way worse than that. <laughs> but yeah. That was a slight sw flipping of the monkey switch. I know. And there's there's a town nearby here called Perry. And they, they shut down school for three days because they had so many people out with the flu. And, you know, I'm sorry, guys. But, you know, I've been a second grade teacher for a really long time. This is my, my 15th year of teaching. And there are people who do not keep their kids home when they're sick. And it's either they don't want to have to deal with them. They have to work and they can't pay for daycare. There's a lot of reasons, and I understand it. But what they don't understand is they're sending somebody in to infect the whole rest of the class. And the way that it's happened in my classroom, it's like, there's this group here, and one of them's sick. And then the next week, two of them from that same area are sick. And it just kind of moves across the room. The kids that hang out with each other all got sick at the same time. Um, we have special groups that are formed at the beginning of the year to go to different specials to music and uh, PE and all these different areas and the kid all the kids that were in the same group ended up getting sick at the same time because they were together so much Yeah, and and thankfully it hasn't been that severe But there hasn't probably the last month I have had an average of three to kid three to four kids gone every day for about a month And that's really unusual usually it's none or one or two that and the one or two that have kind of chronic absences they're basically truant um so it's not unexpected for to have one or two but not three or four and there have been a couple times i had about six gone and it's it's i understand why they closed the schools because it's impossible for you to do any lessons because half the class is gone and they're the ones that are gone are missing everything and so you'd have to do it over and over again so I just take those opportunities to do poetry units or, or do something a little bit different. <clears throat> I can't believe that you're hanging out with us, Boo Bear. He's saying, Mama, it's getting real close to feeding time. So they both come in and just kind of stare at me like, Is it time for you to get up and come feed me yet? But it's scary. There's been a lot of deaths in Oklahoma. A lot. I think the last time I heard it was 70-something. That's a lot of people to die from the flu. And I did have a flu shot, so hopefully that's good enough. But I've been told that some of the strains of the flu are not being prevented by that. Yes, my dear? Did you need something? How many was it the last time you heard of people dying from the flu in Oklahoma? Over a hundred. Over a hundred now? He said it's over a hundred now. So we definitely don't want to mess around with it. Well, I am feeling like it's about time for me to start wrapping things up. I don't feel like very many... I think Eric asked me a question. Maybe I'm not that interesting and there's not anything that you want to know about me. <laughs> or maybe I just tell it to you all already in my hour-long videos that you already know everything about me. But if you have any last-minute questions or would like my opinion on a product or an issue, speak now or forever. Hold your peace because I think in the next 15 minutes or so I'm going to be going. But if I didn't say so, thank you very much for being here. I appreciate it. I'm going to try to do this more often. And I'm going to try to arrange, at least in the near future, kind of a get ready with me. Let's just hang out and chat and I'll do my makeup and just kind of show you my crazy process for how I end up getting things on my face whenever I actually have time to really sit down and play. I did. I wasn't, I wasn't wowed about it. I did unbox it here earlier before you guys got here, I think. Um, this is interesting. And I think it will, I think I'll be using it for um, eyeshadows and inner corner highlights more than I'll actually use it on my cheeks. But this is, I mean, it's okay. I was really hoping for the Ofra G palette just because I, or Z palette. Where did G come from? Where did G even come from? It has never been, anyways, whatever. Ofra Z palette. But anyways, it's all good. I, I like to try new things. 
I was not thrilled about, like I said, I have 8,000 black eyeliners and I give away probably 20 a year. Um, I don't think these are worth $30, but I'll still use them. I'll try them and see how they are. Um, I do have a lot of crown brushes that I really like. And so, maybe they'll be awesome. I don't know. I'll give them a try. I always need a backup set for when I'm washing the ones I love. So, uh, you'll have to tell me which one you ended up with. I'm real excited. I'm tempted to use this tomorrow, but this is what I'm talking about. When I'm getting ready to go to work, I'm not real inspired to use something that I'm not sure how it's going to perform on my eye. Like, I really want to try this, but I need to wait until it's not going to back up my entire eye look if it doesn't work the way that I think it's going to. But I'm excited about this one because this is a super pretty color. I'll put it back on my hand again to show you. If you haven't already seen it, it's super pretty. It's kind of like a lilac color. And it's super shimmery. But I put this on my hand last night just because I was curious before I even did the unboxing. And once it dried, it did not move. But I have a weird thing where things things crease on my inner eye area right here. But also, like I said, I've since I started using Painterly Paint Pot as my primer, I haven't had that as much. And since I've started setting my primer, I haven't had that as much. Hey, Carlos. How are you? Um, thank you for stopping in. I appreciate it. But isn't it funny how you evolve in the makeup game and things that used to didn't work because you couldn't figure out a method and then you keep trying things that people suggest and then all of a sudden you don't have that issue anymore. Um, I have an entire drawer of Super Shock Shadows by ColourPop and I never use them. And the reason I never use them is because... Um, they used to crease big time on me, no matter what I what primer I use. But I haven't tried them since I started using Painterly, and I also haven't tried to use them with a cut crease, which I think might be another thing that would um, keep it from creasing. So maybe I need to get out a few of my ColourPop shadows and just give it a try. There's just not enough time for all the experimentation that I want to do. I don't have time to, to sit there and... You know, I get ready. I actually get up really early. I get up about 4.30 um, so that I have time to do everything I need to do to get my body working. Medicine and ice packs and things that I have to do to get my body working. And then after that, I want to have at least an hour to do my face. And, you know, sometimes I don't. Obviously, I don't wear lashes to school every day. Um, and But I wanted to do something kind of fancy since it was Valentine's Day. <laughs> Um, thank you so much. I appreciate it, Carlos. Try what now? Try what now, Heidi? But anyways, um, some days I do this when it's a little bit of a special occasion and some days I don't do it at all. <laughs> yeah. I am definitely the working class. But anyways, I was trying to get this off my hand with the tissue since I don't know what happened to my makeup wipes. Or they've disappeared. Um, and it's not moving. Oh, I would. That's what I'm talking about. I'm in my office. This isn't even where any of my beauty stuff is. I don't have anything in here. They're all in my other room and where my vanity is. And I was talking about earlier before you got here that, um, that I, for some reason, I lose internet when I'm in my room because I think my bedroom is, it's like my router's in here in this office and my room is on the complete other side of the house. And I don't have a giant house, but it's still a long distance away. And it's not that I can't ever get internet. It's that it kind of comes off and on. And, you know, I don't want to end up where I'm having you guys knock, getting knocked off and you guys are going to have to keep coming back and forth and entering. But I'm still, I'm going to have to experiment with that eventually. I have a different router, I think, since the last time I did that. Um... So maybe on a Saturday or Sunday, maybe I'll do a little experiment and see if I can stay connected. Um, and yeah, I'll try out all that stuff of it. It's 
I, you know, just the thought of getting, even when I did my favorites on my last live stream, that was a ton, it took me like an hour to prepare that and get that all together and bring that in here and make sure I didn't forget anything. It's just too time consuming to try to get everything that I would use and bring it in here for, and I would end up having to get up 14 times and go get whatever I forgot. And so until I can figure out a way to actually do things at my vanity and still be, you know, with service, I think I'm going to just not try to do that stuff on a live. But I will try it and I'll tell you the next time I see you. Does anybody else have anything they want to know or an opinion on anything? I'm... I'm going to try the lip scrubby thing, but um, I'm most excited about the the liquid eyeshadow thing. Did any of you guys ever use, this is a long time ago, so you'd have to be closer to my age, but whenever I was younger, my mom used Mary Kay, and they actually had an eyeshadow that you got the brush wet, and you like kind of went into this little cake, and it turned into a liquid and you put it all over your eye and then it dried and when it dried it was shimmery. I just wondered if any of you guys ever saw those. They were, I, I, I'm curious if they have anything like that now because liquids are coming back. I don't do so well with liquid highlighters for some reason. They just don't work well for me, but I, I like liquid eyeshadows a lot. Oh, let me ask you guys, have any of you tried those, um, the new ColourPop lippies? And if you have, do you like them? I'm kind of curious about those. It's kind of cool how they transitioned from something really unique that nobody else did. And now they're starting to bring in some products that are, you know, kind of more typical. But I like that they have the pressed shadows now and I like that they have kind of regular lipsticks. Does anybody have any of those? I think everybody has gotten busy or is going gone to sleep on me. <laughs> so that's my cue and it's time for me to hang it up anyway because it's almost 8 30 and I actually try to get in bed by 9 which tonight that won't happen but it won't be very much longer after 9 9 that I'm gonna get in bed because it's it'll be a busy day oh man I had seen somebody with a PR pack and they had all of them I think it was Rob Beauty Christie actually but um, have you checked back? Because I think I got an email that said they were restocking. Have you checked back since the first time you tried? I'm on such a no-buy. And so it makes me a little bit bummed out. But I'll wait. I'll wait until... Um, I'll wait until June. And I'll get some. Thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, I am going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your support. It is It was a lot of fun to hang out with you and chat. But I'm getting super tired, um, and I need to take, I need to have a little bit of dinner and have some medicine and just get some, some things tied up before I can go to bed. Yeah. Uh, I really want to. I really want to buy a lot of things, but... I'm being a good girl because I'll have a I'll have a really nice haul for my birthday and I'll have some money in the bank. So both of those things I need. Alright guys, love you a lot. <makes noise> Sending you kisses and hugs and loves and all that good stuff. And I'll be seeing you next time. <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs>